Hello everyone, Anthony Samra from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. Today I want to talk to you about praise because despite the fact that most of us, at least some of the time, kind of crave a little bit of verbal acknowledgement or reassurance in the form of kind words, a lot of people can't seem to take a compliment. Something in us just seems to cringe with revulsion sometimes, like we couldn't imagine that anything good about us would be true, or it just makes us feel a little bit awkward um, when someone has something nice to say to us, especially after they first meet us. And we might justify ourselves by thinking, well, you know, I'm just a modest person. But the truth is, in social situations, it can create quite a lot of awkwardness if you can't take a compliment. So I want to speak about two things. One is how to take a compliment. And the other thing is, is there any way that you can sort of alter the way that you praise people to make them less likely to reject your praise? I call that dodge-proof praise. Um, first of all, well, the thing to realize is, you know, if you don't, if you someone gives you a compliment and you don't really receive it, it can leave them feeling quite empty. So you're refusing a gift. You're making the situation unnecessarily awkward. And there's a pretty easy way to avoid getting into that situation. I mean, a lot of people just try and turn it around by giving the other person a compliment straight afterwards. And that can work sometimes, but I don't think it's the best approach because a lot of the time it can just make people feel like you've not really accepted what they've tried to give you. So, in my experience, one of the best ways to do this is just to say thank you and then make a comment on what they say. I mean, I remember one of my ex-girlfriends uh, told me explicitly one of the things she liked about me when she met me was that if she gave me a compliment, um, I didn't I, I didn't have a problem accepting it, uh, I, I think, uh, whether it was on something that I was wearing or something like that. Um, if she said, I'd like that shirt, I might say, oh, thank you, I got it here. You know, I'd say where I got it, and, or I'd say, that's one of my favorite ones as well. Um, or if they compliment you on your pasta sauce, you can say, thanks, I made it from scratch. Uh, what I did was simmer the tomatoes in a pot with olive oil, garlic, basil, and oregano. There you go, boom. You've just um, accepted the compliment, and you've said something about it. Say what you like about it, um, you know. <laughs> the, the, I just imagine someone being complimented in their hair and going, oh, thanks, I just got it done. That kind of cliche. Okay, there you go. Fix, pretty easy. Another thing is if you're in a situation where you want to flirt with someone, then you can tease them. You know, if someone gives you a compliment, you just go, starting with the compliments already, huh? You know, <laughs> just get it over with and buy me a drink. Or, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm not giving it up that easy. Or whatever you can think of. But of course, you have to be careful when you use that approach because you need to monitor your tone and make sure you've got a great big smile on your face so that then they know they're, you're joking and that you're not just being conceited. So um, given that a lot of people find it hard to take compliments, is there a way that we can calibrate the way that we praise people to make it more likely to land? And obviously the fact that I'm answering, so asking the question suggests that I have some ideas for that. I think that praise that's really, really easy to reject is praise that's given in the form of an adjective. You're so smart, you're so intelligent, you're so beautiful, you're so uh, witty, whatever it is. Like a bunch of stuff happens when that happens because one, you're putting yourself in the position of the judge of the other person and they might think, oh, you know, no, I'm not, or are they just saying that because <laughs> it's, or, or they, they might be suspicious of your motives, or they might um, not really believe it's true. Everyone's got these kind of bouncers in their heads, and um, praise that's delivered in the form of a compliment, uh, sorry, an adjective, especially towards people you don't know that well, might be okay with people you know well, um, is more likely to meet with their bouncers. Another thing is, you know, I remember being in situations where, see, once you think someone's got that idea of you or that label of you, you feel like you need to live up to it. I remember one time when I was in my teens, I was on a holiday and uh, one of the people there said that I was really funny 
And after that, I thought I had to be the funny guy and I was always trying to live up to that. I remember, and it was too much pressure and it made me feel unnatural. And in another situation, um, I remember someone was described, this quite a long time ago when I still had long hair, someone described uh, me as like the first legitimate hippie they'd ever met. And a friend of mine remarked that, well, I don't know if he's all just a hippie, you know, he's also really into science and things like that. And then I had a perception in my head around these people of being like the hippie guy that was also into science and I wanted to live up to that reputation. So what can you do instead? There's a few things. One is like to give more descriptive praise. Um, to return to your beautiful thing, obviously it comes in when you want to speak, if you're a guy that wants to speak to a girl or something like that. Um, a lot of the time that really arouses suspicion because uh, she's going to wonder what you're up to. I don't think many guys will reject being told by a girl that they've just met, oh, you're so handsome. Why? Because it doesn't really happen that often. But he's definitely going to think that you want more than just friendship. So you could comment when you meet meet a woman. One one of the comments are really good. Um, I, like, I like what you're wearing. It really suits you. And um, that ties it to them. You know, it's not just what they're wearing, it's, it suits them personally. Um, or if they've styled their hair or something like that, you need to calibrate and make sure you're in a situation that's appropriate to that. Um, not just uh, shoot out your compliments left, right and centre. Um, this is, really isn't a video on dating so, uh, approaches necessarily. That could be a whole different other topic. Um, that we could cover in another video if that's something that interests you and um, approaches for um, speaking to women. Sometimes such a direct approach isn't always excellent. Other times it is, but you have to calibrate that. I fear I'm straying from the topic. I was going on to descriptive praise. So you could say what you like about something that the other person is wearing. Um, say, don't just say it's nice, but you know, make a comment on what it looks like, what you like about it. Um, similarly, it's basically you're looking at what you value and report it. So rather than just saying, oh, say you saw someone in a play, rather than just saying your friend is a great actor, say what you liked about it. Like, well, I really enjoyed the pauses you took while performing the to be or not to be speech. I've never heard it done that way. Or think how much um, happier you you would be if someone made you if you made someone a scarf let's say if you can make scarves and someone said something descriptive oh look at this rich blue co color and even these stitches here rather than that scarf is really beautiful or you're a great you're a great you're oh you're great at making things you know oh you're so creative and um, you could say you can say why things are useful to you and um, this scarf will keep me warm all day or at work these reports will save me a lot of time before the meeting. You say what that person, what you liked about it or what that person has done that's helped you. And you should also avoid giving praise, uh, two types of praise. One is like positive reinforcement. So when you thank your spouse for cleaning the kitchen because they never do it and you just want them to do it more often, they will feel it and they will resent it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't thank them for cleaning the kitchen, you should, but you shouldn't try and use it as a carrot to incentivize them to do it again. Be descriptive, say what was it about cleaning the kitchen that made your life easier? Oh, that's one less thing for me to worry about. That's one more thing off my list. Oh, it was so, I felt so good when I came into the house and I saw that you'd cleaned the kitchen. Express how you feel, explain how it helped you. So if someone gives you a right to your new new place with your stuff you say oh thanks for giving me a lift it would have it would have been so much harder for me it would have taken so much longer and tired me out if it had to carry carry me carry it all down the road you really got me out of a jam so it's good to express your appreciation for everything that anyone does you can do that by saying what it did for you or how you made it feel rather than just saying oh you're such a kind person or you're so considerate or in the case of your children, you're such a good boy or girl, you know, you wouldn't say that to an adult. Um, so I don't really recommend patronizing children. The other kind of praise, speaking about children, people do this a lot, uh, that I would suggest avoiding is the kind of praise that points out a past weakness. So if your child 
always forgets their jacket or your spouse or your spouse always forgets their jacket. You don't say, oh, that was really great. You remember to bring your jacket today because they kind of know, you know, it's just, it can just be irritating. So I think you, I think, I think that's fairly understood. Um, about another thing that the psychological literature seems to reinforce is that praising effort really gets a better reaction out of people than just praising their achievements. I remember a couple of incidents of this. Once I was at a gig and I saw this beatboxer play and he was like really, really awesome, really awesome musician. Um, well, he wasn't playing an instrument, but I guess it's an instrument. And I met him in the bar afterwards and I said to him, wow, yeah, I can tell you worked really hard. And I just watched as his jaw nearly hit the ground, like couldn't believe what I just said. And he just went, yeah. Yeah, I have worked really hard, I have. And I remember meeting him a year or two later at a theatre venue. So we were sitting outside and he, uh, uh, hey, hey man, you know, saw each other and stuff like that. And I reminded him of that incident because uh, it affected me. And he said, yeah, because that was really amazing because, you know, no one really knows what goes into it. You know, no, um, people just don't. Get it. I got it because, you know, I was a piano player. So whenever I said, oh, you're so talented, another adjective, I just thought, well, I'm not talented. You know, I practice. <laughs> I'm well practiced. So that maybe I am talented, but my bouncers would push that away. And everyone's got kind of similar bouncers. I thought of myself as well practiced. I would have rather someone acknowledged the work that went into it. And I remember once I was in a retreat in Portugal, one of these uh, detox, just fast retreats treats and one of the classes I went to was like rebounding that's like jumping up and down on a trampoline it's really good for you don't make fun like uh, my I'm staying with some friends here and uh, when I brought in the trampoline they laughed a lot because they thought this is something for a child a grown-ass man has just brought a trampoline into the house but um, that those weren't my associations because I never jumped on a trampoline as a child I actually just thought it was exercise classes for women in their 40s. You can look up the benefits of rebounding, but I fear I digress. Um, I really liked her class. And I said to her, you really put a lot of thought into the songs that you pick because they were obviously, they were obviously chosen so that she could do certain routines that went along with the music and keep it interesting for people. And again, like, whoa the the look in her eyes and the she was really touched because no one had ever thought to mention that she you know she put some thought into it so these are really really personal kinds of kinds of compliments that are much more likely to get you the the, the desired results so let me just go over those as those again and say what you like about something that they're wearing or something that they did rather than just saying you like it or you like them rather than just using an adjective say how something that they've done has benefited you personally and um, say how it's made you feel acknowledge the work that's gone into it or of course you can actually do another thing which is just describe what you see which will give them an opportunity to compliment um, themselves for example oh i heard you practicing that piece next door that you've been working on for a while and you made far less mistakes this time or you didn't make any mistakes this time and they go oh yeah you know Oh yeah, I've been practicing hard. It's good, you know. If you uh, you can just actually describe factually what you see, and that that's a more advanced technique, which gives them the opportunity to compliment themselves. Three types of praise to avoid, but this isn't a hard and fast rule, you know. Especially if it's like your girlfriend or something like that, you can tell her that she's beautiful. You know, she's not going to get offended for that by that. She might sometimes she might sometimes worry if she'll always be beautiful, but you know, you're you're boyfriend's probably not going to mind if you say oh you've been working so hard you're so hard working honey or or something like that um, I'm getting gendered here but in general it's better to give descriptive praise rather than adjectives avoid praise that points out previous weaknesses and try and give descriptive praise rather than positive reinforcement so that those are my top tips on how to communicate better when it comes to praise. Mikey Collins, thank you very kindly for leaving a comment saying, hi, I really like your videos. I hope you continue to enjoy them. If you want me to make more, please do me a favor and hit that share button. Until next time, be yourself.
but don't just be yourself be yourself and love it 